Hello, sir. Which one would you like? Today, I'm double hatting. I'm working at this petrol kiosk which serves over 100 vehicles every day because I want to find out what kind of petrol people are pumping. Which one do you normally pump? Yeah, it's 95. 95? Yeah. And have you noticed, uh, you know, sort of you're paying more for it nowadays? Usually, it's after discount, it's 60 plus. Now, it's about 70. 95. I cannot pump the whole tank. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's too expensive. Today, I switched 95 to 98. I can't say it's better to use uh, 98 because it's better for the engine. And have you noticed a, a difference in the pricing? I realize oh, price increasing. When you want to drive, you don't think about petrol price. Okay. Otherwise, you don't drive. In March, on average, it was $3 for 95 octane and $3.45 for 98 octane. By May, pump prices increased further. 98 octane reached about $3.65 per litre, up by 24% compared to the year before, while the popular 95 octane reached $3.20 and lower grade 92 octane reach $3.10. That's over 30% more than the same period last year. See you. In this episode of Talking Point, I'm going to help you find out how you can save on petrol. And for those of you who don't drive, well, stick around because I'll show you how higher oil prices can also affect you. Local reports have said that some Singaporeans are trying to find cheaper petrol alternatives now that borders have opened. And that's because pump prices are the highest it's been in 10 years. Colin Ng has been tracking pump prices for the past seven years, and he's never seen prices this high. And what's causing these pump prices to go up? So one of the factors could be because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Since Russia is actually one of the third uh, highest exporter of crude oil, and we know that uh, petrol is derived from crude oil. So there's this psychological fear that uh, because of this conflict, we are getting less crude oil, and that sends the prices going up. The other factor would be because of the effect in terms of the global supply chain. Mm -hmm. Right, so freight costs, exploration costs are all increasing. That is also sending the petrol prices rising. Do you think we'll ever see pump prices go down? We definitely won't go back to the historical low, whereby in 2016 we are seeing, say, about 185 per litre for around 95. Wow, okay. In the budget 2021, yeah. there was also an increase in the petrol duty taxes, whereby mm. drivers are now required to pay 66 cents a litre for around 95 petrol right. and 79 cents for 98 petrol. Okay. So these are fixed costs that adds to the total cost of uh, petrol. So a full tank of petrol for this car used to cost $170. And now with the price hike, it costs $210. That's a whole $40 more. And you know, with pump prices unlikely to dip anytime soon, I'm wondering if there's a way to stretch my dollar further at the pump. So it's time for a talking point challenge. I roped in two drivers. Li Xuanfeng is dependent on his one and a half year old 1,800cc Toyota Prius hybrid because he's a full-time private hire driver. Afana Hashim is dependent on her five year old 1,800cc Toyota Wish for a different reason. She's your typical mum who ferries around her three children every day to and from school and their endless weekend activities. Give me some idea. Every week, how much petrol do you pump? So every week, I spend around $345 and okay. around 1380 per month. 1380 now, based on current Based on prices. current prices. And before the prices went up, how much It was around $1,000 per month. Ooh, so it's almost $400 more now. Yes. Okay. What about you? I will pump every week. Uh, it's $150 every week. So that's uh, $600 in a month. And before the price hike? Before was one twenty per week. Okay, so that's four hundred eighty in a month. So still at least a hundred dollars more. Yes. So how has this price hike affected you? Pretty significantly, because overall in a year, right, that would be around four thousand five hundred dollars increase in spending. If you sum up the prices, 
I could actually go for a nice holiday. It does disturb my monthly expenses. So every dollar I can save, of course, I would love to do that. So I've got an interesting challenge for you guys. For the next two weeks, I want you to live life as normal. You know, pick as many passengers as you still do, take the kids everywhere that you still do. But we're going to uh, uh, sort of give you some tips on how you can drive better and perhaps become a bit more fuel efficient with the way you use the car. And then at the end of two weeks, you want to see whether the same amount of petrol can take you further and give you more mileage. Before the drivers embark on the challenge, I'm taking notes on how much mileage they usually get on a full tank of petrol. Trenfen gets by with 700 kilometers on a full tank. He pumps 95 octane three times a week. Afana chalks up 200 kilometers on a full tank for 95 octane fuel. To get the driver started, I've arranged for their cars to be inspected by mechanic Sean Sia. So between these two cars, would one of them be using more petrol than the other? Yes, definitely, because one is a hybrid, while the other is an internal combustion engine, which is uh, your traditional engine. Also, because uh, one of them is a larger vehicle, it's heavier, and the lighter one tends to use less fuel. Generally, a lightweight car would be below 1,200 kilograms. A medium one falls within 1,200 to 2,000 kilograms. Any size beyond that would be considered a heavy car. Okay, Steve, so let's just take a look at the cars and see if there's anything wrong with them. After all, poor maintenance can lead to increased fuel consumption. Let's go! Sean has brought along his trusty diagnostic tablet to run a health report. He starts by checking the fuel injectors and oxygen sensors to make sure they are in good working order. Good news for the drivers, no issue spotted. Let's have a look at the tyre pressure. I have a little what gate here. What number should we be looking at? We should be looking at around 2, 240, 260, yeah, 230. So that's good? It's good enough, although you could actually pump a bit higher. 2.4, that's pretty decent. The tyre is your only contact with the ground, so an improperly inflated tyre will create more drag and you need more power to move the same distance. To find out what the ideal tyre pressure for your car is, look for a sticker usually placed on the driver's door. Next thing to investigate, their car boot. Wow, you don't do anything. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, this car is good. Let's take a look at your boot. Wow. Okay. Okay. There's a lot of stuff you have. School bags. School bags. Mm -hmm. Some umbrellas. Yes. Uh, booster seat. The bags, well, I mean, whoa. Wow, your kids study real hard. Because <laughs> there are lots of books in here. So I have three kids, so you can imagine the amount. Oh, my hand is tired. This is. 6.2 kg. If you want to save fuel, you should reduce the amount of weight you're carrying. Uh, uh, for example, even the roof rack over there, it also affects the aerodynamics of the car and mm. creates more air resistance when you're driving. When a car's aerodynamics are compromised, it places a higher drag on the car. More energy is needed to keep the car going forward. Similarly, the heavier the load in your car, the more fuel you burn because more energy is needed to get the car moving. And I saw you inspecting a few things, the, the fuel injector, the oxygen level. How do all those things affect the car? A fuel injector is where your fuel comes out from. So if your injectors are clogged, it will not be able to atomize the fuel so well. So you don't get as clean a burn as you could. And that will affect how well your fuel combusts. The oxygen sensors are actually a feedback to the engine about how well your fuel is burning. So if the oxygen sensor is not giving the correct data, it will affect your fuel consumption. Based on the issues you've mentioned, what is the estimated fuel wastage I'll be looking at? Your fuel wastage could be anywhere from 20 to even 80%. So you had a diagnostic tool to measure those things, you know, but most of us don't have that. So actually, how can we tell 
whether there's anything wrong with the car. So when your car starts to feel uh, more sluggish than normal or even when you start pumping more petrol than you used to, then you know that something might not be so right and you should get that checked out. Hello everyone, um, today is Saturday and it also means it's the busiest day. So I have my eldest here who is going for volleyball practice and my Nawal, where are you? And yes, there's Nawal. She's going for her dance practice, followed by my youngest, who's going for her ballet. Yes, so I have to plan my route so that I can fully maximize the use of petrol. It's the first week of the challenge, and uh, car mechanic Sean actually did mention previously that my car tire isn't optimal enough. So today I'm here at the uh, gas station air pump to try to refill the car tire pressure myself. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this, it's so hot. As Shuanfeng and Afana continue with their challenge, I'm about to discover the wider impact of higher oil prices. And it's affecting all of us. Further increases in the prices of all the goods we consume, the cost of living, is almost guaranteed in the near term. Earlier, I issued a challenge to two drivers, Xuanfeng and Afana, to maximize their fuel consumption. The car mechanic was telling us that this bike rack is taking up too much of a petrol consumption. Uh, do you think we can take it down? I see no better method to transport our bicycles, which we use very often, so we cannot take it down. So, there goes my patrol. Currently, my tyre pressure is at its optimal PSI. Although there isn't a much difference in terms of petrol consumption. Fixing the car isn't helping Xuanfeng and Afana very much. So, my producer has arranged for all of us to meet William Lin. Little did we expect... A driving test! like a driving test so I should try and drive properly right <laughs> it's been some time since I have a driving instructor with me it's the uh, first time ever which I'm driving and there is a camera pointing at me Steve you always sudden acceleration most of the time keep a distance okay uh, we'll be back three minutes I buy something I'm just gonna wait in the car park for him did I drive so bad? Is he going to leave me here alone? Little did we know, this is also part of the test. Did you leave the engine on? I like the aircon on. <laughs> I left the engine on because I thought it was just a few minutes. Okay, we are back. So Mr Lim, now you've gone for a ride with each and every one of us. What are the things we're doing badly? You increase the speed, uh -huh. fast, and then suddenly you break jam the brake. Oh. Uh, you will waste the petrol. Uh. When I do a fast yeah, acceleration, yeah. it burns more petrol. Yeah, yeah. Anything else that we all did that will waste petrol? You all stop the car there, leave the engine. I think this is a big mistake. La. Actually, you all should off the engine. La. But only a few minutes, right? We think like because it's so hot, you want the aircon on. Sometimes, uh, you all stop there for long. Uh. About 15 minutes, you will cause uh, like the, the cup like that. Oh, this is the amount of petrol yeah, we will waste minutes. if we idle for 15 minutes. Yes, yes. Ooh, wow, that's quite a lot. <laughs> Compare that amount to this amount of petrol wastage if your car is left idle for just a minute. For idling, actually, how long is considered too long? Around 10 seconds is really considered too long. This is because when a car engine idles, it continues to burn fuel. This two-page report by a US-based science and engineering agency, Argonne National Laboratory, says that idling the car engine for more than 10 seconds actually consumes more fuel than simply restarting your engine. I'm going to switch off the engine and children. Uh, Mama going to go buy something. Wait for me here. I'm going to roll down the windows so you will have air.
So if you think it's just drivers who are bearing the brunt of these rising crude oil prices, well, think again. I'm about to find out what are the trickle-down effects of these price hikes. David Broadstock is about to tell us why we can expect our household cost of living to continue to rise. Oil is impacting everything we do. It's inflation. It's almost guaranteed, it's even if we don't have vehicles ourselves. When we use private hire, fleet operators need to capture those costs themselves and they'll need to pass it on. Gojek imposed a surcharge of 50 cents for all trips below 10 kilometres and 80 cents for longer trips. Tada has a 50 cent surcharge for trips $18 and under and 80 cents for those above $18. Grab, Singapore's largest ride hailing company, has imposed an extra 50 cent surcharge for all trips. And so here we have a table of daily necessities okay. that we go through in our lives to help us think through how it is that the fuel prices may, may impact us. Well, if we were to take a look at the apples, the transportation cost is flying this around the world and there'll be fuel costs attached to the goods we buy. We also purchase many goods online yeah. and we end up having shipped to us. Mm -hmm. We'll again have an underlying fuel cost. And another interesting example is the cost of electricity. The cost of electricity in Singapore is driven largely by the cost of natural gas. Oil and gas are often found together. And so the costs of producing one very closely mimic the costs of producing the other because it's the same exploration it's the same delivery right, right. Uh, supply chain. So that means that what we see in the cost of oil have the potential to pass through to the cost of gas. In other words, if oil and gas go up, then my electrical bill could so also indeed. go up as well. Yes, indeed, indeed. And, and so that then becomes something which becomes very important to everybody. Remember earlier I asked you what petrol you use for your car? It's 95. 98. I have one last thing to investigate. Which petrol grade can actually offer me the most mileage? I have an answer, but let's find out. <laughs> okay. I have been investigating ways I can maximize on petrol to help save myself a couple of bucks. You know how few companies claim that a higher grade petrol is better for your car? They claim it can improve efficiency by cleaning and protecting your engine. So this is a luxury car that I'm driving here. It has a 2000cc engine and one would imagine would require a more premium petrol. But guess what? It says here that I actually only need to pump it with 95 octane petrol. I'm wondering if I use the more premium version, which costs 15% more, well, will it actually save me more money in the long run and take me further? Only one way to find out. I'm putting 95 and 98 octane fuel to the test to see if the higher the grade, the more fuel efficient it is. Helping me out is Robert Leong. He drives a 1,600cc car and pumps 98 octane petrol. Hey, Robert. Hey, Steve. Hi, hi. Hi. So. What have you prepared for me today? Follow me. I have yeah? a surprise for you. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, Steve, what I have prepared for you today is this 1.3-litre Honda Fit. reason why I brought this car in is that it's any bread and butter car that Singaporeans normally okay. use. Fair it's enough. running on 95 petrol. So we're going to compare the 95 against the 98 octane yes, petrol, right? Yes, correct. So, but this car is running on 95 now, and we repeat that for the 98 as well. Okay, Steve, why don't you hop in your driver's seat? Sure thing. Ah. I start the car? And right. just drive as it is on the, on the road at about 80 kilometers an hour. So fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can feel it moving. Oh. Okay, we're hitting 40. Whoa. This is 60. You want to feel like I, I feel like I need to put on my seatbelt. 70. And we're running at 80. Oh, I kind of feel a bit nervous sitting in a car running at 80 with a wall right in front of me. Mm. 
now we do a switch, I'll pour 98 into the car and we do a run the same test. Let's do that. I jack up the car again to 80 kilometers per hour, but this time running on 98 octane. We are done with 10 minutes of yeah. cruising. So now that we're done with the test, what did the results uh, tell us? While running on 95, we were averaging at 17 kilometers per litre. We did the same for 98. How come there's no difference? Because the engine uh -huh. is already tuned for the certain spec of um, petrol that it's supposed to use. Right. Anything that is more actually gives you the same effect. So you're saying this car was tuned to use 95? Yes, correct. So even if I use 98, it's not going to make any difference. It won't make a difference. So if your car is tuned to take 95 octane petrol, then actually you can skip the premium stuff altogether and save yourself a couple of bucks. It's been two weeks, and I'm meeting Xuanfeng and Afana to see if they've met with some success in terms of either getting more mileage for their fuel or saving on fuel consumption without changing their lifestyles. Shreffung, you used to chalk up 700 kilometers for a full tank of 95 octane. You're paying about 345 in a week. That's 1,380 in a month. How did you do? Sadly, there hasn't been any changes. Okay, so you're saying you're still spending the same amount? Correct. I'm still pumping every two and a half days. Okay. So recently, the uh, everyone has been going back to office, and okay. all these are mainly short distances within town. Right. So within town, traffic are mostly stop and go. So this contributed to the uh, higher petrol consumption. Well, Afana, what about you? You were chalking up 200 kilometers for a full tank, also 95 octane. You were spending about $150 a week. That's 600 in a month. Were you able to save on that? Instead of pumping the petrol every seven days, my full tank can now last me 10 days. Mm. So it means in a month, I will only pump three times. That would actually save me $150. Oh, very good. What did you do? So I reduced my um, sudden acceleration during moving off. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, on top of that, plan my trip for the day. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So that actually helps me a lot. Okay. And I actually stopped idling my car, like ah. for this tweet. So usually when I drop off the other kids, I'll say, okay, I'm going to switch off the engine. And they'll be like, no, mama, it's going to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you continue to carry on with these uh, tips that you've learned? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, for sure. One of the most sustainable tips would be the driving habits. So I will try my best to anticipate the traffic in front of me so that I, I can actually accelerate or decelerate more smoothly and gently to avoid uh, additional unnecessary uh, fuel wastage. Right. So I've discovered that we can save on petrol, but it does take some effort. And since pump prices don't seem to be falling anytime soon, I have been using this. It's a website that compares petrol prices across different retailers. And it's pretty nifty because it really helps me find the cheapest petrol available. So, if you've got other hacks that can help us save on our petrol, well, do drop us an email and let me know. Just right here.